Good day scholars, I hope you're doing well. In this video, we're gonna go through the end of Z, the inconsistencies between Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super. Can Dragon Ball Super work with Dragon Ball Z, the end of Z? Let's see what inconsistencies there are and let's see what will actually work. Now this video is a special feature Patreon one. Big shout out to my buddy, the unknown scholar for his idea, his request on doing this in-depth video about how the hell Dragon Ball Super, the manga, is supposed to realign with the end of Z. He thinks GT did the right choice in just doing things after Z, after it's all said and done. What do you guys think about that? Did Super do the right thing of going straight after the Boo Saga or should they have started after the end of Z? And if you guys here want to feature on the channel, get me to talk about your topics, you're able to do that by checking out my Patreon page. Check out the memberships and see which one works best for you. I really do appreciate your support, guys. You keep me going. YouTube doesn't pay us well at all. So for that, thank you. You are legends. The Unknown Scholar wants to know, you know, how far can the power scaling go? All this multiversal stuff now. Can it be retconned? Will it be retconned? Should it be retconned? The Unknown Scholar didn't like the end of Z personally. I loved it in my opinion. I thought Goku was portrayed like a veteran warrior. I love the end of Z, Gi. That's just a bias there. But the vibes, they're more coming together 10 years later. I enjoyed the peaceful times, the 10 years of peace. Then they all see each other again. I know Bulma mentioned five years, but we'll go into more detail on that in just a second. In a nutshell, there are two two continuities of Dragon Ball. There's the classic, and then there's the modern continuity. And to prove that, well, <laughs> just wait and see. Give this video a like, guys. That really helps out the algorithm and stuff like that. We're going to go through everybody else's answers here. I did post this on my community tab because I knew this was going to be a big topic to discuss, and there's definitely going to be something I'll miss. But I will talk about some of the stuff off the top of my head on what needs to be addressed heading into the end of Z. First things first, guys, Beerus and Whis. They're not in the end of Z. And the reason why I think this is important Important is because Toyotaro has officially stated the whole concept of Dragon Ball Super, the whole idea, the plan is to go into the original Dragon Ball Z ending. He confirmed it, the end of Dragon Ball Z. His words were, we are preparing the ground to direct Dragon Ball Super into the original Dragon Ball Z ending. That's all we got in terms of official confirmation. It could change. They could redo the Dragon Ball Z ending or do a Super's version of that with everything updated, having Beerus and Whis there as well. Kind of similar to the picture here. You can just imagine the end of Z with Beerus and Whis still there. That's if they survive the Super events. I don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. But... If they don't follow through with what Toyotara says here at this Comic-Con a few years back, then we may get a new quote-unquote end of Z, even though it won't be end of Z anymore, it'll be end of Super, and everything may make sense. But right now, I've got to go with what we've already got, what we currently have, what we've only got. If I had to make a guess, I guess that Beerus goes back to sleep and Whis just doesn't get involved with anything anymore. He just goes back to the hierarchy, he has his tea and coffee and all that stuff. And Earth and Universe 7 will just get on with its own stuff. Another inconsistency that I feel like it needs to be addressed is the whole Oob thing. Goku has been waiting, right, in End of Z, Goku has been waiting for Oob this whole time, preparing to face him, preparing to train him, ultimate goal to get the fight of his life. That was Goku's goal. Oob was the one, but Goku knew he could get the fight of his life. Nobody else, not even Vegeta, because if Vegeta was the one, if Vegeta had more potential than Oob, if Vegeta was better than Oob, then why is Goku seeking out this kid and not just sparring with Vegeta time and time again, getting stronger that way? No, Oob was the one narratively back then. And that's back then. This is before everything else happens, like Moro and stuff like that, because then there comes the huge problem of scaling you see, if Oob is just the reincarnation of Kid Buu, Kid Buu, yes, you know what, Super Saiyan 3 Goku fought in the Buu Saga, then how can he still be interested in this level of character, this reincarnation of Kid Buu, if he's already fought and conquered everything in between in the Super events that was far surpassing the Kid Buu fight? If this all fits in and the end of Z stays as it is, it's almost like you'd have to say, well, Oob is still stronger than Moro, Oob is stronger than Gas, Broly, everybody. Jiren, line them all up. If this kid tried, he'd wipe them all out with one blast, right? That's the whole point. Why is Goku still interested? That's something they need to tie up and explain because based on the Moro arc, Oob did the whole lend in his power thing effortlessly and it's supercharged Ultra Instinct Goku. Right there, Oob is just broken. How the hell is Kid Buu's reincarnation is beyond me? So how much God Key did Kid Buu have suppressed in his body, locked away that couldn't be used? Was well, it more than the Grand Supreme Kai? That was the whole point. It happened, wasn't it? The absorption of the God Key that was already there, but that was a much left over after he sealed Moro away. So it, it confuses the hell out of me how they're gonna tie this up, but it's not the only time they'd make a mistake in Dragon Ball. Maybe they'll redo all this all together. It would make the most sense, but I'm not holding my breath for that. I'm still 
still expecting them to just tie this up to the original and it'll just recontextualize everything if that makes sense. Then there's the whole thing about the end of Z and Goku's transformations. Obviously, we didn't get the opportunity to see Goku transform into just Super Saiyan 1 during the end of Z. He stayed in base form. But what's happened to Ultra Instinct at that point? Does he have it? Has he mastered it into his base form? That would make the most sense because Whis was trying to tell Goku, you know, you need to find your own way to transform without equating Ultra Instinct to a transformation. So ultimately, that's like a goal for Goku to combine his emotions, have his own Ultra Instinct, and eventually just it being himself in base form. Doesn't have to transform, it's always there. That's the pinnacle. His own Ultra Instinct, and he wouldn't even have to transform it to the Silverhead version anymore, because if he's got everything in base form, what's the point apart from a visual change and looking cool? Then there's the whole thing about the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot DLC. I don't know if you guys have played it yet, but... Basically what happens is you play as Goku tying up some events at the end of Z, you get to have some interesting character dialogues, but the final battle is against Vegeta in the Wasteland, similar to the Saiyan saga. He's there in his Saiyan armor, waiting for you. Goku powers up to Super Saiyan 3. Remember, this is end of Z. Powers up to Super Saiyan 3. Portraying his max power there and then. Vegeta does the same, not Super Saiyan 3, but he powers up to his maximum power. Super Saiyan 2, he elevates that power even higher. He has a sparkly star aura. I believe it's a new transformation because it's a visual change. That's the true definition of form, having a visual appearance change. And he's much stronger, so why the hell not? It's like the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta sparkly star aura combined with Super Saiyan 2. Even Vegeta's hair looks slightly different. It's almost like Super Vegeta in Budokai 1. That hair, you'll know what I mean. But either way, guys, the end of Z, the Kakarot DLC, released in 2024 totally ignores Dragon Ball Super and the events in that 10 years. In the dialogue, it mentions 10 years of peace. Goku's been living in peace. So this is why I mentioned earlier, there are two continuities to Dragon Ball. The End of Z DLC, the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot game, is fan service to the classic Dragon Ball story before Battle of Gods. Now, yes, they do have Battle of Gods and Resurrection F DLC in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot because those two films, they fall under the name of Dragon Ball Z, not Dragon Ball Super. So it's still loyal to the Dragon Ball Z name, which is the whole point of this. But yes, two continuities. This end of Z, coming out in 2024, guys, is still living true to the original end of Z, where Super Saiyan 3 Goku is the pinnacle power, and then they've just added more info for GDA to have them square off, which I thought was pretty cool anyway. I still think you should have had Super Saiyan 3, but doesn't really matter. The point is, they weren't using God Forms. Now, yes, they do have the DLC, the God Forms, Super Saiyan God and Blue, in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, so where the hell were they in this DLC? It's almost like, are they temporary, or did they just ignore it fully and just say, nope, we're going with classic Dragon Ball Z here, guys. Super doesn't exist. But it obviously does exist because it's the mainstream story right now. Which I find crazy, the fact that they've gone back and lived true to the classic continuity, yet the modern one is still going on. So that's why there's a classic and modern continuity, guys. The old series ended in 1997 after GT, that's the whole point, the anime version. Toei's anime project, GT, was started one week after Dragon Ball Z Episode 291 aired. It was the week after, it was and is the official continuation to Dragon Ball Z the anime, not the manga. Toriyama's manga ended in 1995. Toei did its own thing. And as Toriyama said, Dragon Ball is anime and manga. They both count. So I know it gets confusing with continuities. There is no one set storyline because there are two different versions to enjoy, anime and manga. But then you've got the whole Dragon Ball Super anime and the Super movies, which do combine into Dragon Ball Z Kai. That came up before Super started. It's almost like they updated everything and revamped it ready for a new generation, a new audience. So classic and modern. This could lead to a new quote unquote end of Z. So that's the things off the top of my head. Let's just go through a few here. In the comments, some inconsistencies with Super tying up with end of Z. Snydegag1 says, Vegeta and Goku seemingly having their rivalry put aside for quite some time, but in Super it's still going stronger than ever. Well, in the end of Z, I think the Kanzen ban ending. There's a panel going, sooner or later I will defeat you Kakarot. <laughs> Right after Oob leaves. I find that one very strange because I've got the volumes, the original volumes that came out and it doesn't have that. It just says the end, thank you, without that below. I mean, did they change the smile there? Look, smile, grumpy. Don't know what's going on there. But it almost makes out that Vegeta hasn't beat Goku. Like he's won every fight they've been in. Saiyan Saga, Vegeta wins. I know you guys don't want to hear it, but in the Buu Saga, he still won that fight technically by knocking Goku out. Even though he said it's postponed, he still ended it the way he wanted, took the Senzu and fought Buu, 
how he wanted to fight Boo. Vegeta wins a Dragon Ball Super Superhero. And in the end of Z, the Kakarot DLC, they're both in base form exhausted. Goku wants to just call it a day. He's happy with it. But Vegeta wants to go all the way to the end, down to the last punch. So he's got the better battle spirit in terms of their fight. It means more to him. But Goku doesn't want any more. Vegeta does settle for a draw, but in a way... Goku kind of forfeited. He didn't want no more, but Vegeta did, but they compromised. And then you could go to GT because when they squared off on the bridge after the baby saga, they both powered up to Super Saiyan about to square off. And what happened? Goku's tummy growled, he powered back down, and he wanted to go get some food. So in a way, Goku backed out from that fight as well. They already powered up, they were ready to go. Unless this panel is all about he wants to defeat him at maximum power. I don't know, I don't think Vegeta's got anything to prove or the sooner or later I will defeat you Kakarot. It doesn't work for me because he's the superior one in their battles always has been unless his goal is to defeat him so bad that it's total annihilation in battle there is no down to the last punch that it's total annihilation maybe that's his goal a total domination win check this one here from dark eclipse gohan being relevant well in the end of z he was back to his scholar roots even in the end of z dlc it says he's given up his training again like what the hell's going on there in the dragon ball super manga right now he's in the best frame of mind he's pretty much ever been in finally gets it but we'll see where that goes <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if it goes full circle the cycle continues and he ditches training once again to go back to being a full-time book nerd first thing that comes to mind is bulma and krillin's look yeah the whole thing with bulma wishing to look younger all the time the only thing I can think of in terms of tying that up is the more she does it the quicker her body wants to naturally age back to looking old again I don't know if you guys ever watched Tangled but you'll know what I'm talking about <laughs> she's postponing the inevitable right or maybe a joke wish is done where it's reversing everything that she's done or she makes the decision to go no do you know what I don't want to look like this anymore I want to be natural and she makes the wish but yeah she does look much younger now like much younger and it's not long until the end of z landmark so <laughs> the next one is quite interesting the whole thing about bulma saying to goku look we haven't met in five years or something now i want to clear this one up let me get up the manga panel well there's the anime version guys the talk about it's been five years this one here it says about four years ago and even then you weren't around much because of your training now i'm pretty sure the actual translation was five years ago but in between training trips and if that's the case, you could interpret that as Goku still seeing Bulma every time he heads over to Capsule Corp in order to train with Vegeta. He's not going over there as friends or seeing how she is. This whole argument could be about Goku just not caring about her as a friend when she says in between training trips. And that could justify what's going on in like the Moro arc, the Tournament of Power. Yes, he saw Bulma then, but it was all about training at that time. He wasn't exactly over there as mates. So even the five years leading up to the end of Z, he could still be training with Vegeta here and there, which goes in line with Dragon Ball Super. And he may bump into Bulma here and there, but he's not really going to see her or popping over to see how she is. He's just passing by because he's too busy training. So that's a way that we could kind of tidy up that, the five years thing or four years here, wherever it says. I'm still confused with how we are exactly in the Dragon Ball Super timeline, but I'm pretty sure it's less than one year now for the 28th Budokai Tenkaichi based on how old Pan is. And she was like, what, four or something at the end of Z? She's three now. It's very close. I'm guessing one to two arcs left. Now I could go on forever and check out all these comments and go into detail, but this is a huge topic, guys, so I'm going to have to cut this one here. But you let me know in the comments below. Can Dragon Ball Z work with Dragon Ball Super, particularly the end of Z, what we've got? How can they tidy it up? What inconsistencies need to be sorted out? And do you think they will make a new type of end of Z? Perhaps in a movie version, let's say they did a Black Freezer movie and that was the final arc of Super. Perhaps they could have the new quote-unquote end of Z at the end of that movie to showcase we've made it to the landmark. Hit the like. Thank you so much for tuning in. Special thanks to the Unknown Scholar for this idea. I do love talking about this one. It is one of the most interesting topics in Dragon Ball because it is the unknown right now. I love the unknown in terms of Dragon Ball. It's going to be one of the most exciting times ever when we get to it to finally find out what the hell happens. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.